We have hundreds of thousands of people here, and I just want them to be recognized by the fake news media. Turn your cameras, please, and show what's really happening out here, because these people are not going to take it any longer. They're not going to take it any longer. All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats, which is what they're doing, and stolen by the fake news media. That's what they've done and what they're doing. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. Former President Donald Trump may have struggled to find attorneys for his impeachment trial, but his newfound attorneys are not struggling to find arguments to support his case. But are these legal arguments in Trump's 14-page response to the Dems' 80-page impeachment brief, are they actually legit? I'm attorney Adrian Lawrence, and this is Overruled. Welcome into TYT's Overruled, where you get to be the judge. On today's docket are the arguments former President Donald Trump's attorneys are proffering for his impeachment trial. Here are the three things you need to know about Trump's first formal answer to the impeachment charges before him. First, Trump's legal team argues that he can't be impeached because he's no longer president but a private citizen. Trump, however, cites no case law to support this legal conclusion. Rather, he rests on the plain language of the Constitution. Given that there's a lack of precedent here, well, hey, this could possibly go either way. However, there is a situation in the past in which there was an official who was impeached and removed after he resigned. Still, we don't know and we don't have a definite answer, and thus this could go either way, especially seeing as the majority of Senate Republicans are looking for an out when it comes to actually holding Trump accountable. Second, Donnie's legal team is arguing that he did not incite the January 6th insurrection on the U.S. Capitol, but that Trump's words of encouragement to supporters were protected by the First Amendment right to free speech. So let's go ahead and kind of break this down a bit. Among other things, Trump said to his minions, if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. He now claims that such statements weren't meant to refer to violence, but the need to fight for election security in general. Yeah, right. Even if this argument were remotely plausible, which I argue it was not, attempting to invoke the First Amendment is nonsense. Free speech is is a protective measure, but it only has certain limits. It does not protect the right to incite an insurrection, just as it doesn't protect hate speech. The U.S. Supreme Court has held that advocating for violence is not protected by the First Amendment when it is directed to inciting or producing imminent lawless action and is likely to incite or produce such action. Basically, SCOTUS is saying that if your words are geared towards starting something and are likely to actually start something, it's not protected by the First Amendment's right to free speech. And as we got to see on January 6th, hey, Trump's words definitely started something as we saw all of those insurrectionists rush the Capitol. And third, interestingly enough, Trump's legal team avoids arguing that the 2020 presidential election results were rigged or stolen. Now, that's an interesting omission here, given that Trump has been advancing that lie for the past three months and was reportedly unwilling to drop it. That is, until his previous legal team dropped him. In this response, Trump's lawyers, however, do argue that Trump believed he won and was within his right to really push that whole ideology that Biden did not fairly win. And they also kind of indicate that there is insufficient evidence to really disprove Trump's belief, notwithstanding more than 60 court rulings rejecting the notion that the election was taken by fraud. So that's it. Those are the three things that you need to know about Trump's legal arguments in response to the impeachment charges. What do you think? Do you think Trump's arguments are actual winners? Or do you think that the Senate Republicans don't care and they are not going to vote to remove him regardless? You let me know in the comments below. Also, you can hit me up on Twitter using the hashtag TYT Overruled. Follow us here for more, and thanks for watching.